so today we'll talk about the methods of preparation of alkyl halides the first way of preparing alkyl halides is from alcohols from alcohols there are three ways in which alkyl halides can be prepared the first is by using halogen acids second by using phosphorus halides and the third by using thionyl chloride the first process <coughs> that is by using halogen acids the mechanism can be written as follows ROH plus HX leads to the formation of RX plus H2 this is known as haloalkane or alkyl halides In the case of primary and secondary alcohols, <coughs> the process is done by using hydrochloric acid gas, which is made to pass through alcohol in the presence of anhydrous zinc chloride. This reaction has a name in it, it's known as Groves process. The reaction is as follows CH3Cl sorry CH3 CH2 OH an alcohol is taken then a halogen acid in the gaseous state is made to react in the presence of anhydrous ZnCl2 anhydrous means in the absence of water ZnCl2 the reaction product is CH3 CH2 Cl plus H2O we can do the same thing in the case of secondary alcohols too but in the case of tertiary alcohols we actually don't need to use HCl gas or anhydrous ZnCl2 a concentrated HCl acid is enough to chlorinate an alcohol which is which has a 3 degree, three degree carbon because they are very reactive so in the case of tertiary alcohol we can just use concentrate HCl and that will be enough to form the alkyl halide In the case of tertiary alcohols but in the case of one degree or in the case of two degrees we need to use HCl and anhydrous ZnCl2 anhydrous ZnCl2 acts as a Lewis acid which forms a coordination bond with the oxygen atom of alcohol leading to the um, leading to the cleavage of the bond between carbon and oxygen which helps in the formation of carbon chlorine bond it can be shown as follows CH3, CH2, OH, the ZnCl2 acts as a Lewis acid which is accepting lone pair of electrons. So it forms a coordination bond. Due to this coordination bond, a del plus charge is formed on the oxygen atom and this leads to the cleavage of this bond. And when this bond is cleaved, chloride anion comes and forms a bond with this carbon atom. 
leading to the formation of CH3, CH2, Cl and ZnCl2 coordinated with OH. So the Groves process name can only be used if it is a 1 degree or, or a 2 degree alcohol which is made to react with HCl gas in the presence of anhydrous ZnCl2. Only then we can use the name Groves process, not in the case of tertiary alcohols where concentrated HCl is used. This was the process to make haloalkanes but only chloroalkanes. But in the case of bromoalkanes, the process is a little bit different. In the case of bromoalkanes, we cannot use HBr and make the reaction take place because if we use HBr, it is very unstable and before the reaction takes place, it may decompose. So, the reaction takes place in the presence of concentrated H2SO4. Now what is the necessity of concentrated H2SO4 in this reaction is that HBr is a very unstable compound and therefore it is formed in situ that is within the reaction reaction. Within the reaction mixture at first HBr is formed and then alcohol is added to it or alcohol is already added to it and the reagent HBr is formed within the reaction mixture. Suppose here the CH3, CH2OH is already present. We add KBr, potassium bromide and H2SO4 which forms HBr within the reaction mixture and reacts with alcohol to form alkyl halide. So the reaction is actually shown this way. The first step is the KBr will react with H2SO4 to give K2SO4 plus HBr. <coughs> the HBr formed, the HBr formed will then react with the alcohol this is formed in situ that is within the reaction mixture this leads to the formation of CH3 CH2 Br plus H2 so in the case of bromination we can see that the presence of H2SO4 and the making the reaction in reactants in situ is a very vital part of the process in the case of iodoalkanes we face the same problems iodoalkanes as for this reaction we will be needing HI as halogen acid this is again unstable and therefore we need to use an acid but in this case we cannot use H2SO4 because H2SO4 may decompose HI so we need to use a weaker acid something like phosphoric acid so potassium iodide plus H3PO4 leads to the formation of KH2PO4 plus HI. This reaction is done in situ that is within the reaction mixture. This HI further reacts with the alcohol and leads to the formation of iodoalkane. So in this case the acid uses, used is H3PO4 phosphoric acid and in the case of bromination we have used sulfuric acid. <coughs> now a very vital part of this reaction is the nature of the alcohol and the nature of the halogen acids. So we also need to study the reactivity of the halogen acids and the alcohols that we are considering reactivity of 
halogen acids hi is greater than hbr greater than hcl this is quite evident because iodine is very large sized and hydrogen is small sized hbr is further smaller as bromine is smaller than iodine therefore the bond will be stronger and in the case of cl because of the small size of chlorine the bond will be extremely so strong therefore the removal of proton that is the release of proton in order to show acidity will be maximum in this case as the bond strength is very small due to this reason the reactivity order is hi greater than hbr greater than hcl now if you want to consider the reactivity of alcohols we know that most of the reactions in the case of uh, halogen acids is um, they mainly go through sn1 reaction so formation of carbocation is a vital process vital part of the process so ch3 c ch3 ch3 oh now when the alcohol accepts an accepts a proton from this forms this the release of this leaving group leads to the formation of a carbocation now this carbocation is 3 degree but if we had a 2 degree alcohol this is a 3 degree alcohol as this carbon atom is attached to 1 2 3 carbons so we are calling it a 3 degree alcohol this carbon is attached to 2 therefore 2 degree alcohol it is attached to 2 carbons this will lead to the formation of this carbocation through the same process as I have elaborated above this will be a 2 degree carbocation second last one this is a primary alcohol that is a 1 degree alcohol this will lead to the formation of a one degree carbocation now we know that alkyl groups have a plus i effect on the neighboring carbon atom so these alkyl methyl groups will show plus i effect which will decrease the positive charge on the central carbon atom this decrease in charge on the central carbon atom will increase with the number of methyl groups or alkyl groups that are attached with to the carbon atom in this case that is in the 3 degree carb uh, carbocation maximum number of alkyl groups are attached to the central carbon atom so the positive charge on the central carbon atom will be least in this case so it will be the most stable as more charge if more charge is present it will make the intermediate more unstable in this case as large number of alkyl group 3 uh, to say 3 alkyl groups are attached to the central carbon atom so the plus i effect is huge leading to the decrease in the positive charge and hence making the carbocation or the intermediate very stable the 2 degree carbocation has 2 alkyl groups attached to the central carbon atom so it is less stable than 3 degree but more stable than this 1 degree carbocation the 1 degree carbocation will have the least stability so in order to arrange them in in the order of the stability of carbocations order of stability of carbocations <coughs> the 3 degree carbocation will have maximum stability followed by the 2 degree carbocation and then last comes the primary carbocation so this is the order of stability of carbocation next from this we can come to the conclusion that 
the alcohol that gives the 3 degree carbocation that is this one will be the most reactive as the formation of carbocation is the rate determining step therefore from this 3 degree alcohol will get this 3 degree carbocation as this 3 degree carbocation is the most stable therefore this 3 degree alcohol will be most reactive which will be greater than CH3 C CH3 HOH this is a 2 degree alcohol this will be less re lesser reactive than the 3 degree alcohol and last will come the primary alcohol sorry primary alcohol so this will be the order of reactivity of the alcohol now we have studied all the halogen acid reactions that are used for the preparation of alcohols next we'll come to the phosphorus halide part so preparation of alkyl halides from alcohols by using phosphorus halides there are two type of phosphorus halides especially in the case of chlorides we that are that are used to form alkyl halides from alcohol one is pcl5 that is phosphorus pentachloride another is pcl3 phosphorus trichloride so ch3 i am using a specific reaction of ethanol we can also use it as, as a as use it as a general reaction by using roh so ch3 ch2 oh on reaction with pcl5 will form ch3 ch2 cl plus po cl3 <coughs> plus hcl and ch3 ch2 oh alcohol when it reacts with pcl3 we need to make sure that the reaction is balanced so 3 ch3 ch3 ch2 cl plus h3 po3 now the names are very important here this is known as phosphoryl chloride this is known as phosphorus acid okay so in the case of pcl5 we can see that the halide is also halide is formed here too but the side products are pocl3 and hcl in the case of pcl3 the alkyl halide is the same but the side product is a phosphorus acid now the problem with uh, bromination and iodination is <coughs> that is the formation of bromoalkane or iodoalkane is the formed PBr3 and Pi3 are not very stable compounds so again the same thing comes when the react reagent used is not stable we need to form it in situ and make the reaction within the same vessel so at first uh, for bromination the bromination what do we do we make p4 and br2 react to form 4 pbr3 then in the same vessel we put alcohol and make it react to form ch3 CH2PR plus 
H3 PO3. This is done in the same vessel. This is formed in situ. In the same vessel where the alcohol is present <coughs> or alcohol is later added but the reagent formed is not transferred from one vessel to another vessel because PBR3 and PI3, PI3 as we know are very unstable compounds. The same thing is done in iodination. P4 is made to react with I2. This forms PI3 and then we make it undergo reaction with the alcohol to form CH3, CH2, I plus H3, PO3. Next is the last process that is preparation of alkyl halides from alcohols by using SOCl2 that is thionyl chloride it's a very simple reaction but the mechanism is a little different from the above used it follows the SNI reaction so ROH is made to react with SOCl2 the, uh, the conditions are very important we reflux it in the presence of pyridine the process of reflux is a little complex and probably I will explain it later so ROH plus SOCl2 we reflux it in the presence of pyridine so RCl is formed SO2 is formed plus HCl is formed now for preparation purpose in the industrial stage or in any other stage there is a very efficient reaction because in most cases the product formed is a mixture of chemicals that needs to be separated but in this case SO2 and HCl both are gases and will remove and will be removed from the reaction mixture immediately as they will be evaporated by giving heat but RCl will remain <coughs> so in the product SO2 and HCl being gas will leave the reaction mixture and RCl will stay back for using it as a specific reaction let us suppose consider ethanol and make it undergo reaction with SOCl2 reflux it in the presence of pyridine which leads to the formation of CH3, CH2, Cl, SO2 and HCl. This will leave the reaction mixture and chloro chloroethane will be formed. So this is how chloroalkanes are formed from alcohols. The second part is the preparation of haloalkanes or alkyl halides from hydrocarbons this is not an efficient process and it's not used much but for academic purposes purposes we'll be discussing it So from alkane we usually do halogenation to form haloalkanes. Let us suppose CH3, CH2, CH3. This will be made to react with Cl2 in the presence of sunlight. The problem with this reaction is the formation of multiple products. This is a 2 degree halide. Another product that can be formed here is CH3, CH2, CH2, Cl. This is a 1 degree product. And many more multiple uh, halogenation can take place, which leads to the formation of a mixture of products. Due to this reason, 
the efficiency of this reaction is very low and is not used much other than industrial preparations where uh, crude products can be used let us suppose in order to show the crudeness of this reaction I can give an example suppose CH4 is made to react with Cl2 in the presence of sunlight it will lead to the formation of CH3Cl at first then again this CH3Cl will undergo reaction with Cl2 in the presence of sunlight leading to the formation of CH2Cl2 plus HCl this CH2Cl2 will again react with Cl2 in the presence of sunlight to give CHCl3 plus HCl this is known as we know chloroform so CHCl3 plus Cl2 in the presence of sunlight will lead to the form of the ultimate product that is CCl4 so a mixture of products will be formed ranging from CH3Cl to CCl4 the problem with this reaction is this that the efficiency is very low as we usually need a single product from a reaction and it gives a range of products and that too with a simple compound like CH4 if we go a little above like propane or butane we'll, we'll get tons of products which will lead to no efficiency now this reaction is sometimes used in specific reagents like benzylic allylic alcohols uh, uh, sorry alkenes actually not alkenes whenever we use benzylic or allylic we usually use the term compounds because they are no more alkenes so at first we can give an again an introduction introductory speech on benzylic allylic vinylic <coughs> species like in the case of benzylic suppose we want to say that it's a benzylic compound then the thing needs to have a hydrogen atom that is attached to a carbon atom which is further attached to a benzyne benzene ring then we can call it a benzylic compound so this when it reacts with Cl2 in the presence of sunlight the product that is usually formed is CH2Cl and this reaction takes place with quite an efficiency again in the case of allylic compound in the case of allylic compound a hydrogen atom so to say we need to draw it like this and hydrogen atom is attached to a carbon atom which is which is further attached to an sp2 hybridized carbon atom we know that double bonded carbon atoms are sp2 hybridized carbon atom so this sp3 hybridized carbon atom is attached to an sp2 hybridized carbon atom and this sp3 hybridized carbon atom must have a hydrogen atom with it in this case we have three of them but actually we need one so cl2 is made to react with it in the presence of sunlight and this is formed this is known as allylic chloride and this is known as benzylic chloride we know that this reaction goes through radical formation the radical formation leads to the stability of these benzylic and allylic radicals which leads to the formation of efficient products let's say that the allylic, uh, allylic reactant was this way and in the presence of sunlight the radical was formed like this so a free radical is formed this free radical is stable by resonance So these are resonance these are two resonance structures which leads to the stability of the free radical and this free radical on being stable 
leads to the formation of a single product that is which reacts with Cl2 to give allylic chlorides same is the case of benzylic compounds in the benzene to in because of the presence of benzene ring the free radical formed initially gets stabilized and that leads to the formation of efficient product that is a single product fluorination is not done this way because uh, when alkanes are made to react with fluorine they react very exothermically and violently that leads to fires and polyfluorination and so the efficiency further decreases because of the very high uh, reactivity of fluorine iodination also can be done but not with very efficient very much efficiency usually fluorination and bromination are done with these processes so iodination can be explained a little bit if we suppose this reaction ch4 plus i2 leads to the formation of CH3I plus HI. Now the problem with this reaction is the reaction is reversible and not only reversible the backward reaction is very efficient that is the moment this HI will be formed this will react with CH3I <coughs> immediately to give the product to, to give the reactants back. So in order to mm, make sure that the reactants don't come back what we usually do is use Le Chatelier's principle here. In Le Chatelier principle we know uh, class 11 we have studied that uh, whenever we remove the product from the reaction mixture the reaction in order to come back to its original stage shift towards an equilib shifts the equi equilibrium to that side in order to come back to its original state that is if we remove HI then the equilibrium will shift towards right so HI is made to react with a oxidizing agent in order to remove it from the reaction mixture so oxidizing agent like HiO4 reacts with Hi leading to the formation of 3I2 and 3H2. So not only it removes the Hi, it also increases the concentration of I2 leading to the formation of more reaction with the alkane. So this is the way how iodination is done. We need to make sure that an oxidizing agent like HiO4 is present in order to make the reaction move in the forward reaction rea forward direction and not come back now comes formation of what did i give the name of the first part so we can point this as one that is preparation of haloalkanes from hydrocarbons and then we can write it as from alkanes at first and now in the second part we can give roman number two from alkenes so hydrocarbons can be used to form alkyl halides at first we studied from al alkenes and now we are going to study from alkenes so at first addition of hydrogen halides with alkenes so if shown generally a double bond is made to react with a general halogen acid then the hydrogen and the halogen just adds up across the double bond that is one on this direction and one on this side this is the general way of showing the reaction we can also show it with an ethene molecule suppose we use HCl, HCl <coughs> CH2 H CH2 Cl so the H and Cl atom just adds up across the double bond one side on each it may be noted that the symmetrical alkenes gives products easily but unsymmetrical alkenes leads to the formation of mixture of products one major and one minor we know that we usually use Marconica's rule to find out the major product in this case. In this context, we can write the Marconica's rule first and then try to explain it. Markovnikov rule. 
it states that during the addition across unsymmetrical double bonds <coughs> the negative part of the reagent attaches itself to the carbon atom carrying lower number of hydrogen atoms so the negative part of the reagent will add up to the carbon atom that carries less number of hydrogen atoms and the positive part will add to that carbon atom which carries more number of hydrogen atoms to explain it we can use this molecule CH3CH double bond CH2 the reagent has H and Br so this is the negative part we know that on the when the bond breaks the bond electrons go towards bromine and proton is left without an electron so this is the positive part hydrogen is the positive part and bromine is the negative part as per the Marconica's rule the negative part of the reagent attaches itself to that carbon atom which carries lower number of hydrogen atom so this will go and get attached to this carbon atom as it contains only one hydrogen atom and the hydrogen will get attached to that carbon which has more number of hydrogen atom because across this double bond this has one and this has two hydrogen atom so the negative part will go and get attached to this carbon atom as it contains less number of hydrogen atom so CH3 CH Br CH2 H so this will be the Markovnikov product as it follows Markovnikov's rule now this is the rule but the basis of this <coughs> rule is the uh, reaction of alkene with halogen acids goes through the intermediate of, immediate of carbocation so the stability of carbocation is the essential part of this reaction let us suppose C3 CH double bond CH2 when it reacts with HBr this double bond actually catches hold of this proton now when this proton is taken away the proton get, can get attached to this one if it gets attached to this one then this one will get a positive charge and if it gets attached to the terminal carbon that is this one then the positive charge will be built this one on this one so as we can see this is one degree carbocation and this is two degree carbocation we know that 2 degree carbocation is more stable than 1 degree carbocation so the 2 degree carbocation will be preferentially formed and as this will be formed the next step will undergo faster reaction with this carbocation the next step will be the addition of the negative part CH3 CH Cl 
CH two H. We can very easily see that the negative part of the reagent has come and attached itself to a carbon atom, that is this one, with this carbon atom, which is attached to the lesser number of hydrogen atom. And the hydrogen atom has got attached its uh, has got itself attached to that carbon atom, which has more number of hydrogen atom. This is as as per my Mar Markovnikov's rule. So the Markovnikov's rule is justified through the mechanism also. Now, with reference to this, another effect is also studied. That is, the Karash effect. which is also known as anti markovnikov's rule or the peroxide effect now in this case what happens is first uh, uh, let us write the what is the crash effect <coughs> in the case of addition of HBr to an unsymmetrical alkene in the presence of peroxides very important that in the presence of peroxides this effect takes place and not in the normal conditions in the case of addition of HBr to an unsymmetrical alkene in the presence of peroxide the whatever happened in Markovnikov exactly the opposite will happen that is the negative part of the reagent gets attached to the carbon atom containing more number of hydrogen atoms and the positive part will get attached to the carbon atom attached to the or containing carbon atom containing less number of hydrogen atoms. So, uh, what ha we have seen in the Markovnikov product exactly the opposite happens in the case of Karash effect that is in the presence of peroxides if the same reaction is done with HBr that is the addition of HBr with alkene what we see is the exact opposite of Markovnikov effect this is known as the Karash effect let us see this with the help of an example CH3 CH double bond CH2 when it reacts with HBr in normal condition we have seen the Markovnikov product will be formed in the presence of peroxide we will see the exact opposite that is the negative part of the reagent will go and get attached to that carbon which is which contains more number of hydrogen atoms so CH2 more number of hydrogen atoms is contained by this carbon so the bromine will get attached to this carbon and the hydrogen will attach to get attached to that carbon which contains less number of hydrogen atoms so this is known as the anti markovnikov product if the same reaction had been done in the absence of peroxide we would have seen the markovnikov product that is ch3ch double bond ch2 reacting with hbr in the absence of peroxide CH3 CH 
H2. Now the HBr will get attached using Marconic of rule that is the negative part will get attached to that carbon which contains less number of hydrogen atoms that is here and the hydrogen will get attached to that carbon which has more number of hydrogen atoms. So this will be called Marconic of product. So this is the thing that happens in the presence and the absence of peroxides. This is used to form different products like if we need the one bromo haloalkane then we will use peroxide and form this compound by using Karash effect. We, if we need the two uh, suppose two bromo propane that is this compound then we will be using in the absence of peroxide HBr to get this product. So different conditions makes us want different compounds and using this different condition we can get hold of different uh, products which will help us in the synthesis process in different reactions. <coughs> Next is the addition of halogens. In this case, in the above case we have used halogen acids. So we got the product with a single halo compound, but if we use if we add halogens then two halogens will add up to the two carbons of alkene across the double bond and so we'll get <coughs> dihalogen compounds so addition of halogens c h h double bond c h h in the presence of halogen and so using the solvent CCl4, CCl4 is used as a solvent here, CH2, CH2 that was already there, across the double bond on one side one halogen get, uh, gets attached and on another side another halogen, so this is a dihalogen compound. As the halogens are attached side by side, they are also known as vicinal dihalides. In short form, we write this. These are known as vicinal dihalides, as the halogens are attached to neighboring carbon atoms. To be specific, some of the allylic reactions are very important because of their specific conditions, like CH3, CH2 double bond. CH, CH3. We have discussed this allylic reaction before, but we didn't mention the condition. Under 770, we did this reaction in the presence of sunlight, but in the case of heat, the reaction is very specific. And at 773 Kelvin, this product is found very efficiently. So, this reaction is very important. CH3 double bond CH, CH2, C. But in the case of vinyl uh, sorry in the case of propene when pr2 is added same condition can be used but this same reaction cannot be used for fluorination and iodination to be specific only fluorination and brominations are used in allylic benzylic or any other processes where resonance is involved as we have seen that allylic and benzylic compounds use resonance for stabilizing their intermediates but in the case of uh, vinylic compounds that is not possible so these reactions do not undergo the through the processes in which allylic and benzylic compounds go so we need to make sure that we don't uh, jumble up these processes because uh, allylic processes and allylic and benzylic mechanisms usually go through resonance stabilization unlike uh, vinylic reactions a very specific reaction or a speci very specific reagent can be used in the case of allylic bromination that is n bromo succinamide which is in short written as n b s n bromo succinamide succinamide the reagent is ch2 
CH2. So if we write COH and COH here, it will be succinic acid. But the slight changes, they become connected with a nitrogen and this bromine is the main reagent. This when it reacts with an allylic compound like CH2 double bond CH CH3 in the presence of sunlight CH2 double bond CH CH2 Br allylic bromination takes place that is to that carbon which is which is attached to a sp2 hybridized carbon atom so allylic bromination takes place and the side product that is left is ch2 c double bond o c double bond o nh this side product can easily be used to form back this product so this reaction is very efficient in its own way